What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to create a class object without initialization for Dart. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to create an object without initializing it first. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, I have been a little bit under the weather for the last week or so, so I haven't had many videos, but I'm feeling a little bit better now, so we're back and we'll see how this goes. So, in the last video, we created our first class and object, but you'll notice we started by initializing it right away with this constructor. And this is the code from our last video. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Dart videos in the series. So, check that out if you haven't so far. So, a very quick recap we created a person class. That person has a name, sex, and age. And then you can see here's the constructor that kind of creates an object when we first create this thing. If we want to show it, we've got this method that shows it, right? So, you see up here, we're creating an object, P1. That's a person object. It's a class, right? And it's John, male, and 44. So, we're, we're initializing it right off the bat. We're giving it data right away. That data gets sucked into this constructor, gets assigned into P1, and you're good to go. Well, what happens, let's get rid of this second instance of P2. What happens if we don't want to start out right away initializing this thing? If we don't want to actually give it data right away, we just want to sort of create it and then add the data later on. Perfectly normal. You're going to want to do that all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as c2.dart. It was c.dart before. So let's go ahead and save this, head over to our terminal, I'm in my cdart stuff directory, and we can run cdart2.dart, and we get an error, right? It's too few positional arguments. Why? Well, it's our constructor here is looking for these things, right? And we're not passing these things. So that's kind of a problem. So how can we get around this? Well, very, very easy. We don't have to use a constructor like this. We can just get rid of it. So I'm going to change this from a constructor to a method, right? So let's come down here. And instead of just saying, hey, person, let's instead create a, a method. So we go void and let's name this thing. Let's call this uh, add data or something like that, right? The rest of this stays the same. We're going to pass in each of these things, assign them back in like we would before and we're good to go. Well, now you'll see up here, we create our person object. I'm not going to put any data in here. I'm just going to save it like this. Now, this time if we run it, last time we got an error, this time we don't get an error. We get null, null, and null, which is exactly what you want. We haven't given it anything. We haven't given it any information yet. It's just null. That's perfect. That's fantastic. Now, at any time, we can add whatever data we want to P1 and we could do that in several different ways. We can call this method, right? We could go, let's say, add data. So let's go p1 dot add data, and then we just pass in whatever we want. So John, John is a male. John is forty four years old, right? Notice you got to keep these in the same order. So name, sex, and age because down here in our method, we're looking for name, sex, and age, and it's going to assign those based on the order you pass them in. All right, so that'll work. Let's go ahead and p1 dot show data, just like before. Go ahead and save this. Let's come back here and clear this screen, run this guy. You see the first time when we haven't initialized this, haven't added any data, we get null, null, null. The second time after we've added the data, we get John, male, and 44. And it works just fine. And that's all there is to it. Now, that's not the only way you can add data, right? We can uh, comment that out and we can do it manually. So we can go P1 dot and come down here and we have name, sex, or age. So let's go name P1 dot name and we can set that equal to John, right? So if we save this and run it, we're going to see name is John. The rest of them stay the same. They're still null and null because we haven't added any data for sex or age. We could just as easily come back here and, you know, do the same thing. P1 dot sex equals male. And you'll notice we don't have to do these in order. We could go P1 dot age and just set that equal to 44, right? Down here, it's name, sex, and age. Up here, it's name, age, and sex. It doesn't matter. We're doing them one at a time. It's perfectly fine. So if we go ahead and save this, run it, clear this screen. Boom, we get John, male, 44, just as you would expect to see. Person's name is John, they are male and 44 years old. And that's all there is to it. So 
Either way, it really doesn't matter. Do it the way we did it in the last video or do it the way we did it in this video. It just depends on your program flow, what you're trying to accomplish. If you have a system to where you want to create an object, a person, P1, P2, P597, and then later on, as those people come in, you add them individually, you're going to want to do it like we did it in this video. If you know right away all of your data and you just want to map it right up, you know, if you got a database you're sucking data out of and you're just creating objects as they come, do it like we did it in the last video. You already know your data, assign them to the class, create an object, and you're good to go. So either way, whatever you're looking for in your program, that's how you do it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. That's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Doing over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.